are here because you know Ugandans are welcoming. These are the, the people that be like, oh, these Ugandans are always like the welcoming people. So I guess that should be the reason why most of us are here. A few days ago, I decided to go and visit the country of Uganda because it's neighboring Kenya. I was happy to find what I found in Uganda and what I'm about to share with you. You see, when I went to Uganda, I thought I would find black people. I thought I would find only Africans. But I was surprised by one thing. I was surprised by the streets of Kampala. You see, Uganda has welcomed very many people across the world. It has welcomed very many people, even those people who do not like being associated to be African or black. Imagine, we've seen videos, we've seen even in the World Cup, Morocco did not want to be called black. Anybody who is closely resembling a white person or who is closely resembling an Arab do not like associating themselves as black. But they want to be called, but they want to, to live in a, black can, in a black continent. The African continent is so big. Now they want to live in this continent, but they don't want to be called black or they don't want to be called Africans because there is very many stereotypes attached to the name African. Now, the story is different. Not everyone who says that they live in Africa and don't want to be called Africans and black, they are not all the same. Some people who are closely related to Indians or some people who are, who are having lighter complexions, the people of Northern Africa, I'm speaking of Northern Somali, Northern Sudan, I'm speaking of Eritrea, I'm speaking of Djibouti, I'm speaking of Libya. Those are countries on the horn of Africa and then Northern Africa. Some of them do not like being called black or African, but not all of them. I met one of those people who appreciate being black, who appreciate themselves for who they are and the place on earth where God had placed them. You understand? Now, I met this Eritrean girl in Uganda. Uganda has hosted a lot of Eritreans. If you are a Ugandan watching this video, please confirm my words. Am I right or wrong? We have very many Eritreans in Kampala, Uganda, in a street called Kansanga Road. Yes, am I right or wrong? We have a lot of Eritreans in Kansanga Road. We have a lot of Eritreans in Kabalagala Road. We have... We have so many of them. They've built homes. They've built business. They've made business. They've built churches. I was surprised that even Eritreans, not all of them are Muslims. I always thought they were Muslims, but that's not the case. We have Christians. You see, the Western media is what informed us of this information. But when I went to the actual ground, it was different. And I'm happy for the people of Uganda for welcoming these brothers and sisters. African, Africans are always very welcoming. The Sub-Saharan Africa is always welcoming everyone. Imagine the government of Uganda has allowed these individuals to have their own community, build their own church, build their own business, and thrive like it's their own country. Actually, if you're in this part of Uganda, you will think that you're in Eritrea or Somalia or Ethiopia, by the way. I was so happy to see this, and they are doing business and doing all this and that. I was so excited to meet these people. And so I made a video, and I want us to watch this video on my interview with this uh, Eritrean girl. Listen to what she has to say, even though it was a short one, but I want you to listen and to see for yourself, to remind you that Africans, we love people, and Africans, we are always one. Africans in Uganda, President Museveni, you've done a nice work, and I applaud you for this work. Ugandans, it's not only Museveni who did this. Museveni could have allowed, but if you guys refused, it couldn't have happened. You had to accept them and live with them together. Without further ado, let's jump into this video and see what we can get from it. And let's dive in. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. And you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm Annette. It's Annette Michelle. Michelle. So, which part of Africa are you coming from? Uh, I came from Eritrea. Eritrea? Yeah, it's the side of Horn of Africa. How is Eritrea? Um, I'm not sure what to say. 
Okay, the right question should be, uh, right now you're in Uganda, have an elite here, the young girl, um, how is your experience? <laughs> Now, it's not bad actually. It's really perfect and good. And Uganda is the best place. It's nurture. I don't know. So, uh, Uganda is the best place. Now, I kind of noticed we have so many of our. Uh, Very trends. Somali and Ethiopians here. They are here because, you know, Ugandans are welcoming. These are the, the people that be like, oh, this. Ugandans are always like the welcoming people. So I guess that should be the reason why most of us are here. Which generation are you here in Uganda? Please make it clear. Get it. Okay, okay. Um, who came first? Your grandfather or your father? Yeah. Oh. Nobody actually. It was me here first. You alone? Yeah, no, with my family members. So you just came to yourself. You were maybe born here and you came here. Yeah. Wow, that's very nice. Indeed. So, uh, how is your community thriving? How do you find it easy to thrive in a foreign land? It's actually hard, but you have to adapt. Yeah. What are some of the things you love about your country? Uh, actually, their food. I love their food. And Specifically, which food? Uh, matoke with peanuts, actually. Matoke and chicken. Yeah. What else do you love about Uganda? There are a lot, but I don't know right now. <laughs> Everything about it the climate, the weather here is actually nice. Um, the people are also nice. Wow, wow, wow. So, apart from Uganda, have you been to uh, in any other East African country? No. Would you love? I would love to. Which one would you go to first? Either Rwanda or Kenya. Why Rwanda or Kenya? I don't know, I always hear something good about Rwanda, so I actually think it would be a better place. And for Kenya? Kenya, I'm not sure yet, but like there's something that pulls me there, but no reason. Wow, wow, that's very nice. That's very nice. So, do you mind sharing with us some of the advantages? Later on, you will share the disadvantages of living in a, in a foreign country. Mm. Start with the strengths. With that? The advantages. The advantages of being here in Uganda. Most of Eritreans, are you guys Muslims or uh, Christians? Um, I think maybe like 80% or 70%, uh, 75 percent are the Christians. Maybe like 20 to 25 percent are Muslims. But most of us are Christians. And the most is the orthodox. I think it's not well known, but the orthodox has taken. Yeah. So you have a big Christian church for the Lutheran No, the orthodox. I'm a Catholic. But the orthodox, indeed, they have a good church. Between Lutherans, Somalis, and Ethiopians, what is that one thing you can see and tell this one is so and so? Only the accents. But others, nah. Maybe with the Muslim, you can differentiate them because they wear a hijab. Maybe that. But with the Eritreans and the Ethiopians, there's nothing that separates us. We are almost alike. Unless you speak out the language, that's when I will know you're Ethiopian or Eritrean. What message do you have for Africans? What message do I have for Africans? Mm. <laughs> live to the fullest. Live, live to the fullest. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you have to cut this down. So somewhere in 1972 or maybe 1986, 
the president then the then president his name was um Idi Amin made a decree that all Asians should leave uh, the Republic of Uganda. This is so many Indians, it's so many uh, Israelites. The Israelis leave Uganda, the Bangladeshis leave Uganda. But then, after a very long period of time, the president, uh, Idi, Am Idi Amin, uh, was ousted out of power by General Museveni and Obote. Now, after Idi Amin left, uh, Obote came in, and then we had Museveni who came in. Museveni realized that there is a problem with the Ugandan economy. The Ugandan economy was taking a nosedive. And so he decided, no, there is this role of private sector, the private sector economy, the economy of the private sector. I'm not much into economics, so you will forgive me for this. So he saw that the economy of Uganda was taking a nose dive and he said, I know this problem is being caused by what my predecessor did. Now I want to call them back and build up the economy. The president, Yoweri Museveni, called back the Asians back to Uganda. And these Asians have really helped build the economy of the nation of Uganda. Yes, and this is a good thing. What do you think? Shh.